Maybe I should take that advice, go get a life, or maybe get a job or something. Pack it up and head back home, tell everybody I was bluffing. Or maybe I'll just get out my head and focus on what I know's coming. Yeah. Cause I can't fall asleep at night without seeing my dreams. Delusion and reality, I'm somewhere in between. These voices in my head get loud and they keep telling me that I'm a fool for trusting in these wings. Drinking themselves crazy tonight <laughs> Baby, I should call and say, told you I'd be right Wondering how long it was before you realized The biggest mistake of your life And now you're paying the price Oh, is it confidence or confusion? Either way, I feel like I ain't never losing Your opinion or mine, you know just what I'm choosing I gotta do this Cause I can't fall asleep at night Without seeing my dreams Delusion and reality, I'm somewhere in between These voices in my head get loud And they keep telling me That I'm a fool for trusting in these wings But maybe, baby, this will fly night came action coming your way from the castle in North Bloomfield Township. The Golden Knights who sit a game back of Cardington in the conference face another squad one game back. The Fredericktown Freddies as both squads finish out round one of the conference schedule. Who will come out still in the race after a half of the season? We'll find out on your smartphone, TV, PC, tablet, any smart device you have with pregame coming your way next. Ohio Health is the official sports medicine provider of Northmore High School. Available 24 seven to care for your athletes with same day appointment options. We keep your athletes healthy and in the game. Ohio Health is proud to partner with Northmore High School to provide a healthier community. We are healthcare experts close to home, serving teams, parents, and all of Morrow County. Ohio Health, believe in we.
we guarantee nobody else gets you closer to the action than our exclusive coverage. So give me a call, Brian Skaronsky, and let's make you a part of the game. Welcome inside the Morrow County JFS pregame show for this K-Mac showdown in North Bloomfield Township between 8 and 4 Northmore and 5 and 4 Fredericktown. Hello everybody, my name is Travis Berardi alongside Joe Deal With It Baylog. Coach, uh, a marquee matchup here to finish out the first half of the K-Max schedule for Northmore. Fredericktown, they still have Centerburg next week to finish out their schedule, but both of these teams don't look at Fredericktown's record. They're right with Northmore in the K-Mac, a game back of Cardington, and there's a big one in the K-Mac tonight. Cardington at Centerburg, that's a highly anticipated matchup as well. So one of these teams could be tied atop the standings at the end of the night. Yeah, one of the things I've always said about league play is, is uh, you know, you, you necessarily usually don't. You can't win the league in the first round, uh, but you can lose the league in the in the first round. And this is a big game tonight from the standpoint. Whoever comes out on top, big, and uh, um, the team that loses, of course, is going to have two, and they're probably going to need some help then. Uh, and the, you know, if you only have one loss, you you're going to get to play everybody else yep. again. So you still kind of control your own destiny uh, with a win tonight. Let's get into our pregame show and take a look at our team spotlight. First for the Freddies of Fredericktown, five and four. They've won their last three against Northmore. They swept them last year and won the second of two matchups the year before, averaging about 54 points per game. But it's the defense that's been struggling, have been averaging 61.1. And despite all that, they're right in the middle of that Division Three Central District, a spot that if you're not going to be towards the top, you want to be in that middle spot just so you avoid some of the bigger teams when it comes tournament time. Yeah, and, and if you're in the in the middle spot, you're you're still going to kind of have a choice of of who you want to play. So, uh, uh, you know, having that number ten ranking right now um, is is not bad. But uh, a win tonight would would probably bump them up, you know, one or two spots in that Central District. And one of the players to watch for here this evening that will hopefully help Fredericktown out. That is sophomore Blake Sipes, second in the K-Mac in scoring 14.9 points, 6.4 rebounds, and .6 blocks. You know, as a sophomore, anytime you have a sophomore that averages double figures, um, and in this case is, you know, almost 15 points a game, one of the leading scorers in the league, uh, that makes a coach really happy because not only do you have him for the rest of this year, but you're going to have him for two more years. So uh, Sipes is going to is going to need to play well tonight uh, here against Northmore for the Freddies to have success. And now let's take a look at the Northmore team spotlight. Real quick, because we have a special presentation coming up momentarily, but the Golden Knights, fifth in the Division IV Central District RPI rating, they have a chance still with some wins to get towards the top of that. Offensively, almost scoring 60 points. Defensively, 50.3 points. And then shooting 44% from two, 32% from three, and 64% from the free throw line. Well, the first thing that if you look at these stats, the impressive thing is their defense, um, that they're only giving up 50 points a game. That's Coach Tackett's got to be extremely pleased with that. And if you take a look at their offense, I, I mean, their percentages are pretty good. You'd like maybe to be a little bit closer to 50% on that two-point range, but any time a high school team shoots over 30% 30, 30 as a team from three-point range, um, that's a pretty decent percentage. So. Uh, That'll be interesting tonight. All right, we're going to send it down to the court because we have a special set, uh, ceremony coming up. The All Ohioans from the last couple of seasons are going to be presented here. So let's send it down to the floor and listen in to that. As we would like to recognize four outstanding individual athletes for their induction into the Northmore Athletic Hall of Fame. In the spring of 2023, Grant Bentley earned second team All-Ohio on our baseball team. Baseball team finished 21-7 overall. They finished third in the K-Mac, 
and were district runner-ups and the Division IV Central District. Grant had a, four, a .14 batting average, yeah, sorry, .14 at .415 batting average with 19 hits by pitch, 32 runs scored, and he also dished out a .9 ERA. Congratulations, Grant Bentley. Next is Drew Hammond, who was also a member of the highly successful baseball team last spring. At the plate, Drew batted 405 with 25 RBIs, and on the mound, Drew delivered 68 total strikeouts. With these numbers, Drew earned first All Ohio. Congratulations, Drew. Our next honoree is Mr. A.J. Bauer. A.J. earned second team All Ohio quarterback honors on this fall's 2023 football team. A.J. led his team to a 10-3 record overall, second in the KMAC, and the school's second ever trip to the regional semifinals after winning two home playoff games. A.J. had 2,545 passing yards on 155 completions, with 36 total passing touchdowns. Congratulations, AJ. Our final honoree is Jackson Winger, who also earned second team All-Ohio honors as a wide receiver on this year's regional semifinalist football team. Jackson, Jackson had 48 receptions on the season, 908 total receiving yards, and 16 receiving touchdowns. Congratulations, Jack. Give them one more round of applause for these three, three outstanding, four outstanding individuals on their outstanding accomplishment in sports. So congratulations to the four players there from the Golden Knights, but now we'll send it down to the floor for the playing the national anthem, the Star Spangled Banner. So just re about ready to go here at the Castle for this matchup between the Golden Knights of Northmore and the Freddies of Fredericktown as we're back into our pregame show. So let's take a look at our player spotlight for the Golden Knights. And that is one Jax Wenger, finally back after a foot injury during football season, averaging nine points per game in the three games that he's played, Joe. Four rebounds, 2.7 assists. Number 21, Carson. Sorry, Joe, had you unplugged. <coughs> now you may go. Is he just brings stability back to him. I mean, uh, an experienced player that had a great year as a sophomore last year. Um, you know, he's going to be a, a great benefit for them the rest of the year being on the floor just from that leadership standpoint. So I'm sure Coach Tack is glad that he's back in the lineup. Yeah, because he just brings <laughs> that extra scoring to the Golden Knights squad. Let's now take a look at our keys to victory this evening. First for the Fredericktown Freddies. Pack the boards and handle pressure, Joe. This is a squad that, you know, teams that have been able to pressure them well have been able to get some turnovers and have been able to get victories on that. So that 
that's a big one. And also, Northmore averages about 11 offensive rebounds per game, so you got to keep them off the offensive glass because they get a lot of points off of there, Joe. Yeah, and I think the thing that when you talk about handling pressure, you take a look at Frederick Town's starting lineup. They start a freshman and three sophomores. So, um, you know, that ex inexperience many times leads to turnovers. But at this point of the year, many of those – Sophomores, you know, are not shouldn't be sophomores anymore. So, um, I think, uh, you know, Frederick Town's going to look that they're, like they're going to handle the pressure much better tonight. And as we take a look at the starting lineups, Northmore's keys play with balance and drive and kick. They had four scores and double figures. Well, and anytime you have you have uh, you know three or four guys that can score consistently for you, that's going to make a big difference. So there we see Gavin Toombs with a good post move inside, but just misses it off the front of the rim. And also drive and kick. That was another key for Northmore because they like to, they, they have some three-point shooters. They like to drive baseline. They like to drive it in and kick it out. They can continue to do that and hit their shots. They'll be fine tonight. Well, with Northmore's guard guard play, um, what what they're able to do is is uh, exactly what you said, is they're, is they're able to spread the floor, create situations where Fredericktown has to help recover, which if you know if you have a lone close out, it, it, it opens up for three-point shooting opportunities. So both teams unable to score on their first possessions. Second one for Fredericktown. Trevor Bellman off to Blake Sipes. Sipes into the lane, double teamed, kicks it away, a drive into the lane, rejected by Jax Wenger. Welcome back, Jax. He'll get the ball for the second possession, and it looks like he's able to get off the floor easily with that hurt foot. Looks like he's fine now. Yeah, it looks like he's he's feeling a lot better uh, tonight after a couple games in the lineup. He had 15 in the win over Danville. A.J. Bowers' first three-point attempt won't go. Rebound out to Trevor Bellman. He'll run the floor. He'll pull up just inside the three-point line and hit. Yep. Northmore so, not really doing a very good job there of matching the basketball in transition. And Bellman, uh, you know, gets it to about 16 feet. Nobody was matched with him, able to make a jumper off the dribble. 2 nothing, Freddies. Just about two minutes gone by here. Wenger for three. Off the back iron, no. Rebound taken out again by Bellman. So a, a bit of a cold start here for Northmore. Yeah, but Wenger had a really good look. He came off of a double screen, uh, and Fredericktown really didn't get through the screen. He had an open look. Turnaround jumper, no. Drew Hammond there with the board. I was here at about 4.30 this afternoon, and Jack Swanger was out there on the machine shooting threes. <laughs> well, and that's that's what good players do. they got to get up shots. Uh, you know, a, a shooter just doesn't come in and make shots. They, they spend a lot of time uh, working on their, on their game, and uh, it's good to see him. Plus, you know, with having that foot injury, he probably wasn't able to do a lot either. Offensive board, Hunter Falk. Swat it out of there. It'll stay with the Golden Knights, but man, it's been a block party thus far on both sides because on the other side, I think uh, Jax Wenger had a little bit of a deflection yep. on that three-point attempt. Yes. Good out-of-bounds set there. Just, just wasn't able to get it to fall. Under five and a half left opening quarter. Just two-nothing Fredericktown. Carson Reinhardt hands off to Brody Davis. Inside the Tombs, and we're going to get a foul inside on the Golden Knights. You know, Tombs, Tombs has really good size inside. And I think we saw in the first possession, he, he's got pretty good footwork in the post. So, Frederick Tom ball out of bounds on the baseline, a box set. Looking to get it in, they do to Sipes. Henry pass deflected right back to Sites, loses the handle, but deflected off of Drew Hammond out of bounds. It'll stay with Fredericktown with 5.07 left in the first. So Fredericktown changes their out of bounds set. Kind of in a three across look. Get a back screen and a down screen. Now Toombs looking to take it inside, and, there's, and he's stripped. Hunter Falk on the other end. He's going to get fouled, and he'll go to the line after the steal. I mean, good defensive play by Falk getting his hand in there, ripping the ball away, and then finding an open lane to the basket and being strong, taking it to the hole, being able to draw a foul. First foul on Reinhardt as Falk will shoot two. First free throw will not go for Hunter. Nights a little bit cold here as we start the game. 
Um, three, minute, three minutes in, looking for their first point, but good thing is their defense has been good also. And we're going to get a foul on Northmore on the rebound after Falk missed both. 59% free throw shooter, unable to hit either as Drew Hammond will be called for the foul. His first, team second. Under five to play, still 2 nothing. And Northmore in, into a 1-3-1 one, one zone here. Three in the air for Davis off the back iron, and Grant Bentley rips that out for the Golden Knights. Falk, corner A.J. Bauer, he'll try a three. Gets a bounce to go. A.J. Bauer hits. He got into the lineup about three games ago, and he's he's shown out as a good three-point shooter for this squad. Got, got a little bit different of a three-point stroke, but got a good bounce there. Yeah, one of the unique shooting kind strokes of, in the K-Mac. You, you probably don't remember a guy that played at UCLA many years ago named Jamal Wilkes. Uh, kind of kind of can't get, get that ball way behind his head. Uh, but he was also an effective scorer um, for the Bruins in college. Freddie's get another defensive board. They'll look to get this lead back. It's 3-2. Just off the mark, rebound Golden Knights. Mean, Falk. Mean, Northmore doing an excellent job of rebounding the ball at the defensive end. Um, Fredericktown has not gotten a second shot yet here in the first quarter with uh, you know, under four minutes to go in the, in the quarter. So uh, that, that says a lot as to why, I mean, neither team has gotten a fast start, but without the Knights having a quick start offensively, they've done a really good job of keeping Fredericktown off of their offensive glass. Bryson Kearns, Isaac Black now check in for the Golden Knights. Black had a career night against Danville, 10 points off the bench as Falk answers with two made free throws this time, making it a 5-2 game. But that also shows about this Northmore squad this year, Coach, despite the cold shooting performance, they can make up for it on the defensive well, end until they get warm. And we and we saw that we saw that stat that they're only giving up 50 points a game. And we also were able to see it in that Colonel Crawford game. Wenger unable to play, still was hurt. Bentley yep. gets knocked out in the second quarter. You think, okay, this physical Crawford team is just going to start going off then. But instead, they stuck in it, and they had a chance at the end to win. It just couldn't hit any shots. Yeah. But, but you know, a game like that with Crawford early in the season, a game you grow from also. And I think that's that's helped the Knights a little bit as they, as they develop this season. And we were able to see early on that Crawford is still Colonel Crawford. Yep. Look what they've been able to do here yep. this season. I mean, when you have Coach David Sheldon at the helm, you know it's, he's going to get a squad that will play 110%. Yeah, the, the one thing that we've seen and we know about Crawford is uh, w when they come in your gym or you go to their gym, you're going to expect a, a great defensive effort. Golden Knights looking back door. Nice deflection uh, by Sipes to get the turnover. Yeah, a little ran, ran a little high post entry and tried to get uh, – a back screen there by Bentley, um, but uh, nice nice job defensively of Fredericktown having active hands. Bellman loses the handle. Good hustle Wanger. here by Wanger. Nice spin, nice lays spin up move. it in. That's a great play. Jax Wanger with the bucket off the steal. I mean, and Wanger two. just out hustled him. They, yeah. if, if Fredericktown would have touched it, it would have been over in the back, but he just spinned the ball and then really made a nice move to the basket. Toombs fouled as he goes up. We'll take a look at the Wenger bucket on the other end after the steal. Watch this spin, Coach. Just, yep. it, just so easy for him to get in there. Well, you know, he started last year as a sophomore and had a really good year, and um, you expect players to get better year by year, and he's shown that he's got a lot of athletic ability. You know, Toombs, Toombs is now 0 for 3 from the foul line. Um, you got to take advantage when you get to the free throw line here of, of uh, you know, making those, those I guess, what you call easier points, um, easier for some players than others. And right now, Toombs struggling a little bit at the free throw line. And the second yeah. one is all yeah. but down. Yeah. Man, tough break. Rim not very kind to him on that, on that shot. Grant Bentley along the baseline gets it stripped it right to A.J. Bauer. Into the lane, off the glass, and in. 
Now the Golden Knights have some shooting going. Bauer with five, it's nine to two. And you know, one of the things you mentioned in the pregame was Northmore's ability to drive the ball, drive and kick, but there Bauer sees an, an opening and just goes to the glass and finishes it. And I think we're gonna get a foul on Northmore. If that is, we're gonna get two free throws for Fredericktown, and yes, they're gonna call it on. Bryson Kearns, his second, team's fifth, and here comes that new foul shooting rule. Yep. Fredericktown in the bonus the rest of the way here in quarter one. Yep, shooting two. As we just mentioned, Toombs been to the line four times, but not able to make it. The last one was about three quarters of the way down, and he finds this one here. His first point makes it 9-3. Drew Hammond will check back in for Kearns, who got the tough luck second foul there on that play. Well, you can see that North was trying to be really physical with Toombs inside, trying to take away his space, and uh, Toombs has done a good job of, of drawing some fouls and getting to the free throw line. Nine to four here as we approach two minutes left in the first quarter. Backdoor play here. Intercepted though, turned over by the Golden Knights. Into the lane, too strong. A.J. Bauer there with the board. Back comes Wenger across half court. Over to Bentley, thought about the three. He'll drive baseline and get bumped. And that's with Graham Bentley. You have to be close to him because he will yeah, release yeah. for three, but at the same time then he loves that baseline drive and that little stutter back in to take the attempt for the layup if it's there. If it's not, he'll kick it across court for that three. That's their bread and butter, Coach, is driving baseline then kicking to the opposite end for an open three. Yeah, that little fade pass through the corner is a, an effective pass because you got to actually jump out of bounds and make that pass, and it's not a violation. Bentley will try the three. Too strong. Good rebound. Trevor Bellman was called for that foul, so he's on the bench with two. Toombs. Sweet stroke, Gavin Toombs. You know, Toombs has got good size at 6'5", but, but he has that ability that he can play in the post. And as he proven there, he's got a really good shooting stroke from the perimeter. Makes it 9-7, five straight for the Freddies. Hammond. Will drive at the elbow, fakes the shot over the Bauer. Bauer with that stroke, too strong, but there's Grant Bentley with the board. Ball fakes, puts it up, count it for two. The referee almost put his hand up for a foul, but let the play go on. Two points, Golden Knights lead 11-7. There, there's one of the other keys you said was Northmore's ability to get to the offensive glass, and Grant Bentley with a good job of, of, of attacking the glass and then showing his ability that he can finish with contact. Golden Knights then turn Frederick over for the third time in the quarter. And we'll have possession with one minute left here in quarter one. Wenger into the lane, puts it up. He's fouled. He will go to the line for two. The fourth foul on Fredericktown here in quarter number one. They'll be on Brody Davis. Grant Hartley was the one who replaced Bellman. Offensive uh, rebound. Falk, but he's rejected. Ooh, wow. Probably could have been a foul called there. On the other end, Hartley short. Back to the Golden Knights on the board. Golden Knights slowing things up. They will hold for the last shot, possibly. They normally do, but I saw Wenger start to drive at full speed. Thought maybe yeah. they change things up, but no, they'll pull it uh, back out. You know, this is this is Blade Tackett kind of playing from the Colonel Crawford days. Is usually when you get to that 30-second mark in the quarter, and they'll normally you're, do you're, it at 40 as well. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna try to get the last shot of the quarter. And the other thing that's big about this is they're going to get possession of the basketball, too. Bentley can't hit. Two seconds, one second, heave at the buzzer. No good, and that is how quarter number one will end. Northmore, slow start, but they started to get it together at the end. Fredericktown, though, keeping with them. It's 12-7 after one.
Ohio Health is the official sports medicine provider of Northmore High School. Available 24-7 to care for your athletes with same-day appointment options. We keep your athletes healthy and in the game. Ohio Health is proud to partner with Northmore High School to provide a healthier community. We are healthcare experts close to home, serving teams, parents, and all of Morrow County. Ohio Health. Believe in we. Second quarter action about to begin as we welcome in some of you fans probably watching the Upper Sandusky win over Kenton. Coach and I talking during the break. That's a big win for Upper. Kenton just knocked off Liberty Benton and a couple other yep. teams in that Western Buckeye League. So, uh, great win for them. Yeah. So, here we come to start the second quarter. They Northward gets the ball out of bounds. Try to run Bentley off a little curl into the post and Ball gets deflected out of bounds, so it's Northmore ball out of bounds. Talked about Northmore's balance in the pregame. Bauer with five, Wenger wow. with three, and then Bentley and Falk with two each. And speaking of Falk, he's going to go back to the line after that foul underneath. And you just can't let somebody be open like yeah. that across the You know, one of, one of the things I, I talk about a lot uh, is, is special situations. And baseline out of bounds are special situations. So... Right there, you see Bentley set a great screen in Northmore. Excuse me, Fredericktown does not do a very good job of, of getting a switch or defending it, and they get an easy look at the basket. Falk hits his third in a row. Make it four. He yeah, missed his first two, and now he's hit four in a row. Braden Clevenger, who just checked in, called for the foul. Good deflection by Falk there for a steal. Fourth turnover on Fredericktown. Seven point Golden Knight lead. Falk, or Wenger to Falk. Drives into the lane, ball fakes, puts it up, and he's Look gonna go again. back to, that's what makes Hunter Falk such a good guard there, is he's not afraid with his height to drive it in, and then with that ball fake, he draws a lot of fouls. Well, the other thing I think you've seen defensively from Fredericktown is, is they're, not, they're not helping a lot because I think they're concerned with what you had mentioned at the very beginning of the broadcast is their uh, Northmore's ability to drive the ball and kick it for open threes. So what Northmore's done a good job of is they've recognized that, and especially here with Falk, you know, he gets gets two feet in the lane, jump stops, does a little bit of a head and shoulder fake, and then draws a foul. So he's been to the free throw line eight times already here in the first half and has made six of them. Doesn't matter how you make the points. No. Still counts on the scoreboard. He's six for eight. Got six. It's 16-7. And, the, and the, the thing is, when you see somebody that scores a lot of points, uh, Travis, you know, that maybe averages 20-some a game or something, usually they're getting the free throw line a lot. So give credit tonight that Devin Falk's shown his ability to get to the free throw line. So no. Yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. No. No, no, please, please. So I was just going to say hi to people. Town with the timeout here, you know, 16-7. Uh, you're really uh, trying to prevent that ball, the, that going to, you know, double digits. And right now, mm -hmm. I think Coach Tackett's in there talking to his team about, hey, let's let's get this to double digits, and then, you know, take it to 10 or 11. Then let's see if we can get it to 15 here before the half. Do want to welcome everybody watching on Facebook and YouTube. Aaron Sipes rooting on the Freddies tonight. I have a feeling he's looking out for that Sipes boy, Blake Sipes. Thank you for showing it. Thank you for watching. Chad Laurie Richards, go Knights. Dan Hirschner. Thanks, OH Report. Thank you for watching. Dennis Hawk, great to have you back. Go Knights. Great to be back. Joe Smith, go Knights as well. Thank you all for watching. And I know you're here for Coach Baylog's commentary because he's so good at that. Offensive foul. No, just travel. They called or a travel. Or travel, okay. Called a travel I thought here. I saw the elbow go up, but... So Northmore yeah. changed their defense a little bit on that. This last, uh, before the timeout, they were in a 1 3 1. Come out of the timeout, and they go man to man. Corner to Isaac Black. Now to Bentley straight away. He'll drive in, triple team back out to Black. 
And they'll reset with Wenger. 6.45 left in the half, 16-7 Golden Knights. Wenger into the lane. He's going to get bumped as he goes down there, and that will be a foul. You know, Wenger just adds another element to Northmore's game, his ability to drive the ball to the basket, his strength. Uh, you know, you can see why he was such a good player for him a year ago. And it just adds, like I said, to that balance. Yeah. You have Bentley, who's yeah. the leading scorer in the KMAC. You have Drew Hammond and Jack Swinger both averaging nine. Yep. Hunter Falk getting up there as well. So that just, especially if you're a Division Four team, when you have that balance, you're going to be a pretty good yep. school. Hammond just off the mark, rebound back to Fredericktown. They've been doing a good job keeping Northmore off the offensive glass as well. Only two offensive rebounds so far for the Golden Knights. Toombs pulls up, can't get it off the glass. Offensive board put back is good, and there is Blake Sipes with the board in the bucket. It's 16 to nine. Wenger looking to answer. Yep. Euros nice and puts it in, and that is a sight that Golden Knight fans love to see. He did that so many times last year. Yep, came in. Uh, they set a set a little bit of a. High ball screen, Hammond came out and um, he just refused the ball screen and was able to drive it right to the basket and finish. Wenger gonna be called for the foul here. Look at this coach. I That's a lot of ball there. <laughs> Nonetheless, it's the first a lot of ball. First on Jax. I don't know, maybe the ref saw him hit the top. Is that when you're is the rule when your ball hand is on the ball, does your hand count as the ball? That 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 wasn't a foul. Okay. <laughs> That's what that wasn't a foul. Into the corner, three for Clevenger. Too strong, but there is Toombs with the board. He puts it back off the glass and in. I mean, Toombs just using his size and strength to get that offensive rebound and finish. There was the same, same set, Hammond setting a little bit of a high ball screen. Take a look at the replay of the board in the bucket for Toombs. I mean, for a sophomore, he's, he's got good footwork inside here. On the other end, Trevor Bellman picks up his third foul. So Brody Davis will have to come replace him with 5.23 left in the half. Inbounds uh, off uh, the knee. They had, it, they had it again. It was the same, same box play they ran earlier where it's just a, a diagonal screen from the backside block. Um, and Fredericktown luckily uh, had the ball. The, the pass wasn't as good, and it was bounced out of bounds and turnover on the Knights. Clevenger gets it back out to Davis, closely guarded by Hunter Falk. Now to Sipes. He'll drive in, put it up. Offensive foul that time. So we take a look at the replay here. Grant Bentley, even with the shoulder. <laughs> Wasn't afraid yeah. to get in there. I don't know if he was set completely. I don't know so. if he was, he was set completely either. And there, a lot of contact as he drove it to the basket, too. But you're playing on your home floor, and you get those calls. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way it's supposed to be. And you hope you get that call because it is not pleasant taking a charge sometimes. No, no. no. That's a tough call to make. Bauer. He's going to drive in with a little bit of a floater, just rims out, and there's Sipes with the board. Back comes Toombs into the lane, crosses over, puts it up. No. Ball out of bounds, but it hit the face of Drew Hammond, so it will stay with Fredericktown, down seven with 439 left. You now, Toombs kind of showing he's got a lot to his game. I mean, been able to post up and score, hit a three, uh, uh, you know, off the catch, and there, you know, makes a nice crossover move. and. and almost finishes at the basket. And that three's big for him because it's making Northmore come out and guard him yeah. beyond the arc, and that's what's allowing him to drive. Yeah. Sipes tried to go Jordan-like, but misses off the bottom of the backboard. Ahead to Bentley. Bentley, ball fakes, puts it up. Somehow that hit the bottom of the rim <laughs> had, and rolled up. That had, a, that had a little bit of a different English on it. Uh, usually see the ball get above the, uh, above the block and come down that. That kind of came from below the block and it's rolled over top of the rim. Now he is a golfer, so he understands yeah, English yeah, of a ball. That's right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I we gotta show the replay of that because I did I don't understand how that went in. 
Golden Knights picking up the defense and a carry called uh, as the whole uh, bench getting up. And let's take a look at that replay of this bucket because I still – look at this. It, it <laughs> kind of kind of almost looked like it hit the bottom corner of the backboard and then spun up and in. So, so I don't know. So maybe that golf, that, that uh, spin of yeah. a golf ball has helped him on that. But <laughs> nice move there by Grant Bentley. 20-11. to 11. Bentley back out the winger. He's going to try a deep three. Yes. Uh, nice nice little set there that they ran was, you know, they used the high ball screen and then uh, um, the elevator came, came off of a, a down screen. And then he got kind of got a little bit of a flare at the top that was able to have a lot of space to make that three. Into the lane. Nice reversal, but can't get it to fall. He gets his own board. Stripped away, though. Ahead to Bauer. Backs it back out. Bentley, he'll try a deeper three. Just off the rim, no rebound to Gavin Toombs. That would have took the roof off this place if he would have hit that. That was about six feet behind the line. Fredericktown down 12, looking to answer. Throws it away, but off the hand of Jack Swinger with under three to play. Two fifty-eight left in the half. At the break, we'll try and get you a Cardington Centerberg score. Oh, and that's going to be a foul on. No, an offensive foul. A lot of push in there, coach. Let's see the replay and tell me what you think. Well, yeah, there's there was a lot of bumping before that, so um, I, I wouldn't be really pleased with that call. Um, you can see Fredericktown head coach uh, trying to get an explanation. I'm not really sure I'd agree with the explanation either. We'll try and get you a replay of that here in a little bit of the whole play. That's kick, so here is that replay, Coach. Well, you can see right away there, there, there's a bump. He gets bumped again. Um, Coach Tackett may have made the influence because he had the call, call on the sideline there of a, of a charge. So, But kind of a breaking point maybe right now here for the Freddies. They're down 12 with 2.40 to go. Really don't want to let this kind of get out of hand early. And a travel on the Golden Knights. Fourth turnover, so that helps. Yeah, Falk, you know, didn't really have anywhere to drive there because Bentley was right in the post um, and just slipped a little bit. Clevenger over the Tombs. Has Wenger guarding him now into North, the corner. Double North, team. Northmore in that 1-3-1 one, one zone. They get the turnover. Wow. Tenth against Fredericktown. Back comes Wenger, three on three over the Falk. Spins into the lane, floats it up. No. Rebound to Fredericktown. Deflected off, but Northmore gets the turnover. Hustle here instead of getting right back. Hunter Falk comes right over with the help yeah. of Isaac Black and gets the turnover. Game getting a little physical now, Coach. Yeah, a little, little bit of emotion here. Bauer for three. Yes. Eight points for A.J. Leads all scores, 26-11. Toombs for an answer, in and out, but an offensive board, put back, got it. Reinhardt with his first points, and he had to work for that one. Big offensive board to get it back to 13. Bauer the winger. And now we're going to get an offensive foul on Northmore. And like I said, this is getting a little chippy here in the second quarter. Take a look at the replay. And I think they called Hunter Falk. Yeah. With his I mean, second. I'm not sure if Falk really moved. I guess maybe they called it for him because of maybe leaning with his shoulder just a little bit. So that's the second foul on Northmore in this second quarter. Reinhardt into the corner. Davis for three. No, but an offensive board by Toombs puts it back up and in. Toombs is having himself a half. 
and, and, nine points. And Fredericktown's hurt Northmore a little bit on the offensive glass here in the second quarter. They have a 4-2 advantage on the boards offensively. Bat Bentley in and out. And back comes Fredericktown. Nearly turned it over. Under a minute to play. They'd like to get this to within single digits before the break. But it's intercepted. Bentley into the lane. Puts it up and in and one. I mean, Grant turn Bentley. Turnovers have really hurt Fredericktown. I think yeah, this is maybe what, number 11? Turnovers at 12th. 12th, yeah. And that'll be the third foul on Davis. And, and many of those turnovers have led to transition opportunities for the Knights. Kearns checks back in for Drew Hammond as Bentley looking to finish the three-point play. He does. He gets it to a 14-point lead. Seven points for him. He's got seven. Bowers got eight. And Wenger also with eight. We, that's one of the things talked about was the balanced scoring. And a turnover, unforced Thir error there, double dribble. Thirteenth turnover for the Freddies. Compared to only four on Northmore. So 30, 31 seconds here. We'll probably expect that the Knights are going to look for the last shot. Last shot of the quarter, and then they're also going to get possession of the basketball to start the second half. And Wenger just slowly across half court. Behind the back, avoids the double team, gets it over to Black, then back to him with 14. Corner to Bentley. Bentley along the baseline. Out of bounds, but deflected and stops with 6.9. And like you said, that's the drive. You can only make that pass out of bounds, but if you're not touching out of bounds, you well, can make you, that you pass. Can, you, can, you can jump in the air and float out of bounds, and it's not a violation. Bentley on the picket nice. fence instead into Kearns, and we're going to get a foul with 5.7 left, but it's going to be two free throws. I mean, really nice action there. They they run him they run him up through that elevator screen, and you know that Fredericton is going to be concerned with Bentley coming out for that three, and uh, the the screener um, Kearns just slips to the basket, made a nice pass to him. Short on the first. That was the third foul on. Reinhardt, Bellman, Davis, and Reinhardt, all with three fouls here for Fredericktown. Yeah, that's all three starters, though. That's, that's, a tough, that's tough for them here in this first half. Second free throw good. Kearns on the board. 5.7 left. Fredericktown has a chance at a heave here. Three seconds. Two behind the back goes Toombs at the half. The volleyball line off the glass. No. And that is how the first half will end. Northmore has pushed its lead to 15. They lead 30 to 15. We'll take a break and be back with the halftime report after this. You're watching Boys High School Hoops live and free on the OH Report. Ohio Health is the official sports medicine provider of Northmore High School. Available 24-7 to care for your athletes with same-day appointment options. We keep your athletes healthy and in the game. Ohio Health is proud to partner with Northmore High School to provide a healthier community. We are healthcare experts close to home, serving teams, parents, and all of Morrow County. Ohio Health. Believe in we.
guarantee nobody else gets you closer to the action than our exclusive coverage. So give me a call, Brian Skaronsky, and let's make you a part of the game. Tonight's KMAC Boys action brought to you live and free on the OH Report thanks to our generous sponsors. Andy Bauer, Edward Jones Financial Advisor. Whether you're planning for retirement, saving for college, grandchildren, or just trying to protect the financial future of the ones you care about most, Andy can develop specific strategies to help you achieve your goals. Ohio means jobs, Morrow County. Need a current job list? Help with your resume or practice interviewing? Morrow County, Ohio Means Jobs provides many services that can assist you. Stop in or give them a call at 419-946-8480. Once again, that's 419-946-8480. Morrow County Job and Family Services. Call 419-947-9111. Or you can see it in the description. Or visit their location in Mount Gilead to see what services are available for your family. The Northmore Athletic Boosters. Northmore Athletic Boosters raise funds to support our Golden Knights student athletes, coaches, community. Go Knights! And Morrow County Hospital, providing great care locally so patients do not have to travel far to receive quality expert health care. Thank you all for sponsoring tonight's game, allowing us to be live and free. As we welcome you back inside the Morrow County JFS Halftime Report. Northmore doubling up Fredericktown in that first half. 30 to 15, Travis Berardi back here with Coach Joe Baylog. And we'll get to the stats in a second, but there are two statistics that are really showing why the Golden Knights are in the lead right now. Yeah, I mean, uh, Fredericktown's turnovers, they have 13 turnovers. Um, you're just not going to win win basketball games uh, by turning it over that many times. And the other the other uh, glaring stat is that uh, you know Northmore's eight of eleven from the line, and Fredericktown's only two of six. And, and then I think the other thing Travis should point out is you know you mentioned the balanced scoring of the Golden Knights. They've got three guys, you know, uh, two with eight, uh, and one with seven. And then oh, for uh, Falk has six with free throws. Yeah, and then. And then for uh, Fredericktown, uh, Toombs has nine, but Sipes only has two. Um, and he came in at his coming average at almost 15 a game. So for the, the Freddies to get back into it, Sipes is going to have to to be a lot better in the second half offensively uh, for the Freddies. We are going to take one more break, and we when we come back, we'll finish up the Morrow County Job and Family Services halftime report right here, live and free on the OH Report. Ohio Health is the official sports medicine provider of Northmore High School. Available 24 seven to care for your athletes with same day appointment options. We keep your athletes healthy and in the game. Ohio Health is proud to partner with Northmore High School to provide a healthier community. We are healthcare experts close to home, serving teams, parents, and all of Morrow County. Ohio Health, believe in we.
We guarantee nobody else gets you closer to the action than our exclusive coverage. So give me a call, Brian Skaronsky, and let's make you a part of the game. Back here in the Mara County JFS Halftime Report. 30 to 15, and for you fans out there, update from Cardington, Centerburg. A 12-point lead at the break, 38 to 26. And right now, Golden Knight fans with their 15-point lead. That's big because if both scores hole up at the midway point, the Golden Knights would control their own destiny for an outright KMAC championship being tied with Cardington and hosting Cardington in a game you'll see live and free later on this season. Now the same for Fredericktown. <coughs> this could keep, if they can come back and win, knock off Centerburg on Wednesday, I believe, then they would be the ones in control of their destiny. But that's a big that's a big result at the break. Yeah, that is. That's, uh, that, as we said, you know, you don't, you don't necessarily win the league in the first round, but, but you, you could lose it. So in this situation, I mean, I, I think if things held like they were right now, that uh, Coach Tack would be extremely happy uh, with with where he would be at the end of the tonight. Let's take a look at some individual scoring here in the first half. First for Fredericktown, Gavin Toombs leads all scores with nine points. Two for six from the line, one, three, two, two-point field goals for nine points. Sipes, Bellman, and Reinhardt all with two. As for the Golden Knights, that balance that we've been talking about, Coach. Bauer oh. and Wenger both with eight. Bentley with seven. Hunter Falk, six of eight from the free throw line, all six of his points. Bryson Kearns, one of two for one point. Score by quarter, 12-7 Northmore after one. They then outscore Fredericktown 18-8 in the second for your 30 to 15 halftime score. Coach, let's start with Fredericktown. What would you like to see them, other than lowering the turnovers, but what well, would you like to see them come out in the second half and I mean, do that, to get that, back in this? That, that's the obvious one is they, they got to, they, they can't turn the basketball over because you're, you're just losing offensive possessions. Um, I mean, there's really nothing else that you could say because you, you got to, if you don't, if you're not getting shots, you're not going to be able to score. Um, so, so that's the big key is they, they just have to do a much better job of taking care of the basketball. And for Northmore, keep doing what you're doing, right? Yeah. They're, they're causing I, pressure. I, they're getting turnovers. And on the other end, after this, despite the slow start, now they're starting to settle in offensively. Yeah, and, you know, you talked about the last game. They had four guys in double figures. And if you take a look at that tonight, they're, they're, if things continue to go as they, they have been, they're going to get four guys in, in double figures again tonight. So... Uh, you know, Jax Wanger just he just adds another dimension to this team. Uh, you know, I had not seen him play until tonight, um, but he just his just his just leadership on the floor is big is big for the success of the Knights. Uh, he he's really a nice player. Freddie's with possession here, so they had the arrow wrong, Coach. It was Fredericktown with possession, and they get a bucket to start. Yeah, I, I, I just read it. So that's that's big. So. So now if you're Fredericktown, you're looking to get a stop here and another score and trying to get this back under under 10 points here, um, you know, within the first four minutes of this quarter. That's a nice take by Blake Sipes as well. Yep. Reversed hands with the right, got it to drop. And one of the things we said at the half was, was he was going to need to score. So, you know, right away they, they give him a good look inside um, and he gets off to a good start here in the third quarter. Golden Knights first possession, Bauer short. On the three rebound, two Sipes. And now with a three, they could cut this back to 10. Bellman, two going, Sipes. Going high low to Toombs, but Great Sipes, hand. Sipes doesn't make a very good pass. That, that pass has got to have a little bit more loft on it because um, Toombs did a good job of pinning his guy inside. Wenger for three. Too much. Rebound to Toombs. Yeah, and Hammond I, got his hand in there on that steal. Yeah, I, and I don't know if, if Coach Tackett's really happy with those two first two shots. I mean, on the first one, there might have been one pass. 
The second one, there was one pass where they've been effective is moving the ball and being able to drive it in the lane. So I would expect their next possession is going to look a little different. Toombs loses the handle, but it will stay with Northmore here with 6.42 left in the third quarter. You can see there's a little bit of emphasis here with Fredericktown of trying to put the ball inside to Sipes and Toombs um, and really, really trying to get better looks at the basket. Freddie's looking inbound. They do out to Davis. Right back to Sipes. Nice cut here on the baseline. And Bellman with his first field goal of quarter number three. Cuts it to 11. It's a 4-0 run to start the second yep. half for Fredericktown. Yep. Good, good start here. Hammond off the glass short and another one pass and done for the yep. Golden Knights. Yeah, not, not a lot of ball movement in their first three possessions. Big shot here. Just off the mark, Graham Bentley. And yeah, that could have cut it to single digits and you think Tackett might have called a timeout after that, but Bentley on the other end answers and he will get a timeout. He's still a little frustrated with the Golden Knights after that bucket. Uh, I think I think Coach Tackett's addressing what, we, what we're talking about. I mean, even though Bentley was able to finish that play, was 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 a pretty tough shot, mm -hmm. and and I think he's going to want a little bit more ball movement in the half court um, to make Frederick Town guard them. So it'll be interesting to see how the Knights respond here with uh, Coach Tackett not not being real real happy with their first four offensive possessions. And it's that that being lackadaisical like that, despite being up so much, it can allow other teams to get back in. Well, I don't know if they're really lackadaisical. It's just that, you know, they they don't under, did not, don't understand what had gotten them to the 30 points in the first half, which was ball movement and then making the defense move and, and uh, finding gaps, to, you know, to make penetration. So, again, they changed defenses here. This has kind of been their changeup. They go to 1-3-1 one, a little bit. And let's see how Frederick Town's able to attack it. Bit of a deflection into a trap. Uh, lucky pass there. Yeah. You really don't like a player jumping in the air and trying to make a pass. Toombs throws it yeah. right to Bentley. Now to Falk. Trying to get back his Toombs. Off the glass, blocked it, but Grant Bentley there, and we're going to get a foul on Bellman. Well, first of all, Falk. Look at the block. Falk made a great play on the steal, but then the, blocks, the block by Toombs really shows his athletic ability. That's going to be the fourth on Bellman is the Fredericktown fans not happy with the call. Real, well, they give it, I was going to show the replay one more time because what a block. Wenger spins, yeah. puts it in. You know, Northmore's really done a nice job on their baseline out of bounds plays. They've shown a couple different looks out of a box set. Kind of get us some screen the screener action there, and, and Jax Wanger makes a nice move off the catch. Reinhardt out the tombs. Baseline, Bentley right there, jumps, gets his own board, then he's fouled. Might have gotten away with a little stutter step there, but nonetheless. Yeah, a little bit of a hop that might have been a travel, but seems like they've kind of gotten away from calling those travels. They say everything's a Euro step nowadays. <laughs> That's the third on Hunter Falk. First Golden Knight in the foul trouble here this evening. Toombs gets the friendly bounce for his 10th point. 34-20. Got them both. Five minutes left in the third, a 13-point Golden Knight lead. Bauer in the corner. He has two threes here tonight. Back out to Falk. Drives in the lane, kicks it back out to Bentley. Bentley will drive now and kind of just got caught in the middle. Can't get the bucket to fall. Davis. Back out to Reinhardt. They're working it around the perimeter. Sipes kicks it out. Nice, nice cut pass. inside. Great offense there. 
as Grant Hartley with his first points of the night. It's back to an 11-point game. I mean, Fredericktown's done a nice job here in the third quarter of just moving the ball side to side. And you've seen that when they've done that, that Northmore's had some defensive breakdowns. Wenger right yeah. back at you with the toilet bowl to fall. Wenger with 12. You can see Wenger just kind of that guy that's the glue. Um, you know, when they need something to happen, he's the guy that does it. Three in the corner, hits the rim above. And I want to show you that block and that foul one more time, Coach. Actually, that's the wrong one. We'll show it to you in a moment. <laughs> but the hustle from Toombs, he was the one who turned it over, but he hustled yeah. back and was able to pin it off the glass. Bentley with some nice authority move. takes it home. Really nice move. Swung the ball, one dribble, long big step, and going right to the glass to finish it. 38-23. And Northmore back into this 1-3-1 defense. Skip pass, left side to Hartley, inside, oh, stolen it away. Wanger gets the bucket, and we're going to get a timeout by Fredericktown as the Golden Knights extend on their lead. Here's the bucket by Jax Wenger, the start coach, but here is the block and then the foul afterwards. Yeah. I mean, Toombs with a really athletic play. I yeah. Mean, especially his size and only being a sophomore, that's that's pretty special. But you can see right now the Knights have have extended it to 17 after there were the timeout. Uh, well, at, at, and there were a couple possessions that Fredericktown had that they could have got it to single digits. But you saw after the timeout, number one, their defensive intensity picked up a little bit more. But more importantly, you saw them move the ball um, at the offensive end. It just didn't stay on one side. You know, went from side to side, and they got much better looks offensively. And that's something with the Golden Knights. You saw Tackett, Coach Tackett, going off on them in the huddle. But this is something before last season that they said uh, they had a, a team meeting before the year, and they they told their coaches said, "Coach us up as much as possible. We don't care if you yell at us, things like that. We want to be coached because we know what team we have." And I, I like that in a squad because sometimes you don't see that much anymore these days. Yeah, I mean. Uh but, but the good programs, that's how it happens. I mean, uh, you, you have to hold players accountable, and, and good, good players want to be held accountable. And they get another yeah. turnover. Hunter falls yeah. into the lane, gets it to go. So they come out of the timeout, and instead of just playing straight 1-3-1, one, one, they extend it and trap it. Now they got it to 19, have a chance maybe to take it to 20. Yeah, starting maybe that turning point you're seeing in this game. But Fredericktown, they have a chance to answer here, but instead a yeah. turnover. You take a look at the bucket by Hunter Falk. Well, how many turnovers is that now in the second half? Is that four? Yeah, they're at 17. Yeah. Bad pass, turnover here. He gives it right back ahead. Tombs counted and won. You know, that's that's really a pretty amazing play. Uh, first of all, able to catch it, and then able to finish without putting the ball on the floor. Um, and the way he, he was twisted yeah, to catch that, yeah. and he's still able to I mean, turn it was, it was a tough and catch get it up. Yeah. It, was, it was almost like, you know, a little bit of a Willie Mays catch over your shoulder. Uh, and again, you know, we, we talked about his athleticism. That's, that's a pretty athletic play. Short on the free throw. He has 13 to lead the Freddies. Bentley on the other end, rejected by Toombs. Yep. What a night he's having. He's going to take it all the way. Euros, short on it. Wenger out with the rebound. Bentley, who just got back up, has the easy lay-in. I'm not going to call that much of a cherry pick because Bentley was on the ground yeah, for a couple step yeah. seconds. Once he was up, that's when the turnover happened. Tombs, though, yeah. 
trying to take this game over. Fouled and won once again. Very impressed with his play tonight, Coach. Yep. Yeah, he has been good. Update from Cardington. Centerberg leads 53-44 with 7.21 left in the game. Toombs completes the three-point play. He's up to 16. Only three seniors on this roster, Coach. Yeah, it's gonna be and a, an offensive foul. It's going to be a, a blocking foul on the screen. Just Kearns, Kearns didn't get there in time to get set. And kind of got him on the, like tripped him on the leg. Yeah, yeah, just, just not set. So that'll be Bryson Kearns' fourth foul. And the team's fourth, so if there's something positive for Fredericktown, they're a foul away from at least going to the line yeah. with a clock stopped here with 90 seconds left in the third quarter. Golden Knights in that trapping zone still. Deep three, yes! Yep. Big bucket there, Reinhardt with five points. So he got it back to 13 again, so again, it, just try to get it under 10 and see what happens. Got and a, a turnover. Toombs going to the basket. Got it to 11. So back at you, Fredericktown, it's an 11 point game. So we're under a minute to go in the third. Let's see what Northmore does here with this possession. Little run and trap by, by the Freddies. Bentley, ball fakes, gets it stripped, mm. but out Almost of bounds. Out of it. It'll stay with Northmore, 45.1 left in the quarter. You said Bentley really likes that right-hand drive along the baseline. So again, this is an area that, that uh, Northmore's really been really effective, baseline out of bounds plays. Yep, little screen to screener action. And Blade Tackett will call a timeout before the five second call. So a roller coaster of scoring here in quarter number three. Fredericktown had it down. Northmore put it back up to 17, but Gavin Toombs has brought his team yeah. back to within 11. You know, if you're, if you're the Freddies, just, just try, want to try to get it under double digits here if you can before the, the end of the quarter. Um, because that's, that's just kind of a mental thing if you can have it in single digits and, um, you know, you, you get a steal or hit a couple shots. Now it's, you get it to a four or five point game, it's a big, big difference. And, you know, Coach Tackett's team had a chance there, I think it was at 19 yeah, to get 19. it above 20. And then, you know, that's the other psychological thing is you get down by 20, you kind of wonder what's going to happen. So Toombs had back to back three, well, and ones. He completed yeah. one of them and then you had the three. So you give Fredericktown a lot of credit here for just the fight that they've shown here in the third quarter. That 8-0 run has them back to within 11. Bentley looking to inbounds, gets it to Wenger. Back to Bentley for three, too strong, and a rebound to Toombs. So well, now Fredericktown might be able to get the last yeah. shot. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if they take the last shot or not. Tough pass, corralled by Davis. Toombs is going to try the three. Just off the mark, ball tipped out. It will go to Northmore with 22.5, and now they will have a chance to hold for the final shot as they normally do. And you're be interested to see what they run here at the end of the quarter. I'm sure it's going to be something with Wanger or Let's Bentley. See. Yeah, flair to Bentley. A little, little high ball screen here. Falk with six, out to Black for three, air balls at three seconds, two, sights at half court, Ooh, almost hit it, but it hits the rim. We've played three. The Freddies have clawed themselves back into this. They trail though by 11 as we head to the fourth. Ohio Health is the official sports medicine provider of Northmore High School. Available 24-7 to care for your athletes with same-day appointment options. We keep your athletes healthy and in the game. Ohio Health is proud to partner with Northmore High School to provide a healthier community. We are healthcare experts close to home, serving teams, parents, and all of Morrow County. 
Ohio Health. Believe in we. It is money time here on the OH Report. Northmore with the 11-point lead. However, Fredericktown with some momentum. They outscored Northmore 18-14 in that quarter. And we still got ourselves a game. Travis Berardi back here with Coach Joe Baylog. Golden Knights, they want to get a bucket here to get some of that momentum back on their first possession of quarter four. Yeah. Wenger over to Hammond. Hammond nearly lost the handle, kicks it to Bentley. He's going to try the three. It's off the mark, but a long offensive rebound to Folk. Back inside, but he throws it away. So Fredericktown got the stop that they needed, and now, now they got a chance that they can get a score and get it under 10 points. And we're going to have uh, some condensation on the ground. So assistant coach Maddox out there. With some mop-up duty. <laughs> Asking for some extra pay on that. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the job assistants have to do, one of many that they do. So Northmore, you can see, sticking with this 1-3-1 zone after the first few possessions of the third quarter um, seemed to slow Frederick Tom down a little bit offensively. Going inside, Hand nice Sipes. Nice what a cut. move. You know, Sipes, Sipes makes the feed to the post and then we used to call that a Laker cut um, and gets gets a little bit of a hand back. So Fredericktown a little fired up now. Got it up to nine points. Wenger gets it to Bentley for three. Answer Man. Northmore. I mean, just a nice, simple set, a high ball screen. Wenger refuses it, forces the help off of Bentley, and Bentley's able to stroke the three. Tooms right back but at you. Tooms comes right back. So back to a nine point game. 21 for Gavin Toombs. Falk into the lane. He draws the foul. Apologies for that. I believe Falk's what, six of eight from the line? Is that what we have? Him? Yes. Missed his first two and it hit six in a row. And that's Davis's fourth foul. Hit the wrong button. They were looking at an old scoreboard from the Winford Crawford game. <laughs> Falk continues to hit his free throws. Back to a 10 point game. Eight of 10 from the line. We were talking about this in the pregame. Northmore, they're usually about a 50% free throw team in the seasons of the past, but they're up to 65%, yeah. which you'd think, okay, that's not good. But for a squad like this that normally doesn't shoot free yeah, throws you, well, it's better. If you shot 50% a year ago, you're getting to 64. That's much better. Nice move inside in the finish for Reinhardt. He's got seven, and it's back to a nine-point game. You know, Fr Fredericktown just needs to get another stop here and a score, and, then, and the game really changes. Falk into the lane. Deflected. Block. Back comes set Fredericktown. Update from Cardington. Pirates have it down to one point, 60 to 59 with three minutes left. Bellman pulls it out. I think you're going to see something where they're going to try to go inside to Sipes and or Toombs. Right there, he's got him on a pin. Deflected. Lays it up yeah. and in, though, because... You know, they've had that look twice, and Sipes just hasn't made a very good pass. But fortu uh, for good fortune for them, the ball got deflected uh, right into the hands of Reinhardt, and he was able to finish. Looked for a little backdoor play there. Fredericktown defended it well. Wenger pulls up. Too strong. Bellman into the lane. Kicks it back out. Clevenger... Then the Bellman Ooh, deflected had, had away. Inside. Turnover hurts him. Folk bumped. Gives it to Bentley for a three. Off the back iron. Rebound to Toombs. Toombs making a move. Wow. 
Wow. 49-44. He's having a great game tonight. 23 points. Wenger to Bentley, not a fault. Bentley inside. He's fouled on the floor. They'll get it inbounds underneath the hoop. Fouls on Clevenger, his so, first, second. So back to this box set again. Let's see what they run out of it this time. In the hand. You're going to see a down screen here for Bentley, I think. Nope, little back screen. It's going to come into some flex action. Into the lane, over to Hammond. Back out. Now to Wenger. Open three. Drains it. Timeout. Blade Tackett. Big three by Jax Wenger. He has seven in the second half, 17 overall. And the Golden Knights have this back up to eight. You know, as we said, he's, you, you can see why he's such a difference maker on this basketball team because he's the guy they kind of look for to make the play when it needs to be made. You know, him or Grant Bentley. And, you know, Bentley has had some open looks, just not been able to make it. Wenger, that's a big shot there to, to stretch it back out to eight points. 52-44 here in the fourth. Much better second half here by Fredericktown, however. And well, the play of Gavin Toombs Gavin just Toombs has been phenomenal. Has been the guy, so it'll be interesting to see what they come out, what Northmore comes out defensively here. You know, they, they've come out with some 1-3-1 one, one out of timeouts in the past. But I'm going to anticipate that they're going to probably try to have a, a little bit better matchup on Toombs and maybe face guard him a little bit to see if they can take him away. <laughs> so Blade Tackett, head coach of the Golden Knights, drawing a defensive play up here. Probably feeling they get well, a, another stop and score. They'll get this, some of that momentum back. This is back. what I was interested in when they came out. Look who's guarding, Jax Wenger. Uh, uh, so they're they're putting their best their best athlete on him here, and they're face guarding him. Nearly gets it stolen. Double team spins, wow. and we will get a foul on the floor. There was a grab. That's still a pretty good move by Toombs. Or he's yeah, absolutely. The trap, nice spin. Trapped with the spin move and was able to, to maintain control of the basketball. So Fredericktown baseline out of bounds here. Second on Wenger. Inbounds back to Toombs. He tries the three, air balls it, but we'll get a foul on the rebound on Drew Hammond, and we'll get another inbounds. Second on Hammond. Uh, this is an interesting out of bounds set. You're all right, you're all right. Now Wasn't over tipped, back. so that's good. Reinhardt. But you can see their face guard tubes right now with Wanger. They're, they're going to look, try to, try to go right to him, maybe look a little bit of that high low again. There it is. Sipes picks up his dribble, but another, another foul. foul. Third foul here on the Knights. That's going to go against Falk as we'll take a look at the replay and okay. <laughs> That's his fourth. All I'm going to say is they're calling it both ways. Yep. And an Illegal offensive screen. foul on Toombs. Uh, you know the one one of the things that's a little been a little bit oh, of difference yeah. in the basketball game as we talk about those special situations, I think Northmore scored three times on baseline out of bounds, and then they've done a great job defending Fredericktown on baseline out of bounds. You know, many times people don't look at that in the game, but but that's many times the difference in the game. Right now, that's a that's a 6-0 difference in this basketball game. <coughs> Falk into the lane, ball fakes, puts it up, no. Rebound to Toombs. Full head of speed, gets it over the Sipes. Sipes. Puts it up off the glass, short, Toom, tipped. What a, what a great effort to go to the glass, though. Falk with the board. And he throws it off of Sipes. Had no passing lane there and just smartly just throws it off out of bounds so they can inbounds. 
the foul against Tombs, you saw maybe a bit of frustration now he's getting face guard. He kind of jumped yep. into the defender yeah. for that block, that screen. Yeah, and that's that's one of the things when you face guard somebody is to get in their head a little bit. Wenger, Bentley for three. Yes. <laughs> Wenger and Bentley with back-to-back -back threes, and just like that, it's back to an 11-point game. Yep. And you, you can see Bentley, why he's the 1,000-point scorer. Great confidence in his shot. He's not shot it extremely well tonight, but if he has an open shot, he's going to look to take it. And despite that, he still has 19. Yep, yep, yeah. Really like him as a player. And great defense on the other end. Bentley getting close to becoming the second all-time scorer, second place on the list in Northmore scoring history. Wenger. Corner to Bauer, thought about the three, skips it back out to Falk with 2.12 left in regulation. Bentley, cross to Wenger, playing a little keep away now. Yep. Three fouls against Fredericktown. They do have one to give before Northmore goes to the line. Bentley, uh, now to Falk. You're going to see Northmore looking for layups here. Off of Fredericktown, it'll stay with Northmore. Now we're going to get a full timeout by Fredericktown. 152 left. This was down yeah. to what? Seven points. Actually, seven I, think it was, I think it was the five. Or five, yeah. It was five when Wanger hit the three off of the. Yes, you're right. I think it was off of a, was it off of a baseline out of bounds play? I don't know. Yeah, sure. he got open, wide open three. So, yeah, 6 0 so, run by the Golden Knights. But So, that, that baseline out of bounds play difference might be more than I even said. I thought it was 6 0. It might be uh, 7 0 or 9 0. Um, here is that play. Just the extra pass. Yep. Wide yeah. open for three. Yeah. And then Grant Bentley here. Again, there's that drive, there's that kick, and it's an 11 point lead once again. So if you're Fredericktown right now, Northmore's going to try and play keep away. Well, Immediately, do you try and go for the two shots? Do you I, go for the no, steal? I, what? I, I think what you're, what you're going to try to do here out of the out of bounds play is. You're going to try to look to get some trap, but as they start holding it, you're probably going to have to foul and, and try to make it into a contest with the hope that they're going to miss free throws. So, you know, if one of the things you in that timeout you probably have mentioned is with whoever they have on the floor, you're looking at, you know, who are, the, who are their worst free throw shooters, and those are the guys that we want to try to foul. Gets the inbounds to Bentley. Bentley into the lane over the Wenger oh, layup shot. Yeah. Good. And one. The late foul. And the Golden Knights with another chance at adding another point on there. As you saw, looked like Clevenger kind of went through Wenger after the shot. So now Wenger has 19 points with a chance to get 20. Frederick Town's got to get somebody off the floor. They got six guys out there, so. Sipes, looks like Sipes is coming out. And now Jax with 20. 145 left, a 14 point Golden Knight lead. Clevenger over to Davis for three, too strong. Long rebound to Bentley, and a jump ball. So, possession will go now to Fredericktown with 88 seconds left. Hold the phone. It was called a foul. I saw, you and I both saw this close ref here call jump ball right here on the screen. But the one in the back, we'll see it again. The referee in the back calls a foul. Look at him right here. Yeah. And that's going to foul Davis out. And I think it'll, it's going to put Northport at the free throw line. That's their fourth foul. I believe nope. it's a fifth. No, now they're going to say five. I think it's a fifth. 
No, it's their fourth. He said it was five fouls on Davis. That's why he held up the five fingers. But now they're going to say five. I don't know what's going on. It had three. We didn't have a foul down here. Yeah, we did. The end yeah. one. You're yep. right. You're right. Yep. And that puts Grant Bentley at the line. So after all the confusion, an 80% free throw shooter and Grant Bentley now shooting two. First free throw good for Bentley. Yeah, that's He's a, got 20. That's a nice combo, Bentley and Wanger. Mm -hmm. I mean, and they can show you why Northmore was such a good team at the end of the year last year. And if they would hit one free throw more at the end of that district championship game, they would have been district champs for the first time ever. Well, I'm sure that taste is in their mouth here as they're, as they're mm -hmm. approaching this, this run here in January and preparing for the tournament. Layup too strong, rebound to Isaac Black. And Sipes has just had a tough night tonight. I mean, Northmore right now is not gonna shoot anything except a free throw or a layup. Um, they're not gonna shoot any open jump shots. Logan Caudill checks in for the Golden Knights. There's 43 seconds, Hammond gets yeah. the lay in. His first points of the night. Back comes Fredericktown, Euros short on the layup, Hammond there with the board. And now with 30 seconds, I don't. A technical foul gonna be called on Toombs. But just, you know, frustration coming out. Yeah. You know, is it, being a sophomore, sometimes that happens. Is when you become a junior and a senior, you gotta, gotta kind of, you know, be a little bit more poised at times. But, you know, the final score of this game is not really gonna indicate no. where it was. No. Give Fre Frederick Town the credit, but uh, again, what hurt them here down the stretch was, you know, turning the ball over. And also give Northmore credit, Bentley and yep. Wenger, for hitting shots when they needed to. Yep. But yes, Fredericktown, they've got some big, they had some big wins. They've knocked off a clear 14, that beat Pleasant, that beat Northmore. Well, they're young. They're, they're young, and start, two, those wins start, will help out. Start a freshman and three sophomores, so you're going you're gonna to have some of that inconsistency. And, and no, the, the Knights are going to have to go down there to Fredericktown and play you know, here in the second half of the season. And we'll have that game live and free for you as well. 64 to 44. The JV players for Northmore getting a little time. Sipes, the varsity still in here. Reverse is, whoo, got some English on yeah. that one. He's got eight. Final five seconds. And I don't think they're going to have to get it across half no. court. And they won't. It's a final. Northmore. Depending on the Centerburg Cardington game, we'll stay right in the conference hunt. Fredericktown, like we said, it's it's a tough one for them. They had it down to five points, but the Golden Knights hit their shots. 64-46 is the final. We'll take a break when we come back. We'll have our Morrow County JFS post game show, as well as our Ohio Means Jobs Morrow County MVP, right here, live and free.
Ohio Health is the official sports medicine provider of Northmore High School. Available 24-7 to care for your athletes with same-day appointment options. We keep your athletes healthy and in the game. Ohio Health is proud to partner with Northmore High School to provide a healthier community. We are healthcare experts close to home, serving teams, parents, and all of Morrow County. Ohio Health. Believe in we. guarantee nobody else gets you closer to the action than our exclusive coverage. So give me a call, Brian Skaronsky, and let's make you a part of the game.
time now for our Ohio Means Jobs. Morrow County MVP. Welcome back, Jack Swenger. His fourth game back this season. He puts up 20 points. Also hits one heck of a three with them up five to extend it to eight. Helps the Golden Knights pull away with the victory over Fredericktown. First of all, congratulations, Jax. They've Thank gotten you. you three straight times before this game. This has got to feel good for you guys. Yeah, it feels amazing. That's what Coach Sake was saying before the game, is how it's been a while since we've got one. Um, they took a big one from us last year, and uh, it just feels good to come back and get them one here at home. And it's got to feel good for you to finally be able to get back out on the floor 100%. I know you had a little bit of time against Crestline, you got some major minutes against Carrington, then against Danville, but now it seems like you're back to full playing strength, not only with your foot, but conditioning and your shot as well. Yeah, when I first came back, the conditioning was uh, not the best. So I knew in practice I just had to go hard, get myself back into it. In the past few games, I've worked in well and it's coming to me now, so it's great. Uh, you guys finished the first half of the KMAC season 5-1 and one with Centerberg's victory over Cardington. I believe that was the final 69-61. I un unconfirmed, but I think that was the score. You guys, Cardington, Centerberg, atop the K-Mac where you guys want to be. You have nine wins on the season. It seems like everything that you want to check off, you're still in play for. Yeah, definitely. Uh, that just means we have to lock in the second round to K-Mac. I mean, we can't. We know we had a close game against Cardington, so we know we'll be able to get them the second time. We just got to stay focused for that one. And then uh, Centerburg this weekend, we got to stay focused all week in practice, and we'll be great against them. And, yes, you get a, you get a whole week off beforehand. Just uh, what are some things you guys want to work on this week that you learned from this game that you want to get better for for that Centerburg game? Because they played you tough. It's a battle of first-place teams now. Yeah, they're in the second half of the game. They went on the little run. We had some breakdowns defensively, so definitely got to break down the film. Um, fix that in practice, but really just hitting shots, locking in defensively, and we'll do our thing. All right, lastly, my friend, you know what to do. Look into the camera, give anybody a shout out. Go for it. Uh, shout out to all my family that came to watch tonight. There you have it. Welcome back, Jack Swenger. 20 points as the Golden Knights get back to number one in the KMAC. Congratulations, man. Thank you very much. Ohio Health is the official sports medicine provider of Northmore High School. Available 24-7 to care for your athletes with same-day appointment options. We keep your athletes healthy and in the game. Ohio Health is proud to partner with Northmore High School to provide a healthier community. We are healthcare experts close to home, serving teams, parents, and all of Morrow County. Ohio Health. Believe in we. Back now inside the Morrow County Job and Family Services post-game show. Northmore pulls away in the fourth quarter for the 64-46 victory. Travis Berardi back here with Coach Joe Baylog. Turning point of this one. Fredericktown with a great night from Gavin Toombs. Had it cut down to five points after trailing by 19 early in the third. But then Jack Swinger, open three, hits it. Grant Bentley, open three, hits it, gets it to 11, changes the complexion of this one. Yeah, I mean, the, the thing that we talked about before the game was the balance that Northmore had, but also they have two really good players in Wanger um, and Bentley. Um, and you can see with both of those guys, um, they're not afraid of the opportunity, uh, you know, when, when they're needed. And, and they, both of them also kind of embrace that opportunity that, you know, when the going gets tough, they're going to get going. And, uh, 
those those two possessions tonight were, were the turning point of the basketball game. Let's take a look at the final statistics. Once again, brought to you by Morrow County Job and Family Services. Fredericktown, one more two. Northmore, three more threes. But the big stat, 16 of 19 from the line. A team that, like we said, normally they were 50, 55% last year, the last few years, 64%. But the last couple of big games they've had, they've been really good at the line. Yeah, and the other the other turnover, I mean, Fredericton did a much better job in the second half. I believe they only had six turnovers in the second half. But that 13 turnovers in the first half, and you put yourself, you know, in, in a 15-point deficit, um, it's just really hard to, to fight back. But, they, you know, they got it to five. But, you know, sometimes the amount of energy it takes to cut that deficit to that point, um, you just need a couple more plays and – you know, they weren't able to make them, and Northmore did, um, led by Wanger and Bentley. They, that was that was key. Before we wrap things up, uh, score individual scoring for tonight. Gavin Toombs, a co-game high, 23 points. Reinhardt with nine. Blake Seitz with eight. Four points from Trevor Bellman. Two points from Grant Hartley. As for Northmore, that balance we've been talking about. 23 from Grant Bentley. 20 from Jax Wenger. 10 from Hunter Falk. Eight from A.J. Bauer. Two from... Drew Hammond and one from Bryson Kern. Score by quarter, 12-7 Northmore after one. 18-8 Northmore in the second. It was 30-15. to You thought Northmore was going to pull away, have it comfortably, but no. Fredericktown, they got, they're a team that fights. Five and five, don't look at that record because they've been and they're a young. really good team. And they're young. Yeah, 18-14 yeah, in good. that third quarter. Cut it to 11. Like we said, they cut it to five, but Northmore hit some big shots in the end. Pull away late with free throws, 20 to 13 in the fourth for the 64-46 win. But like I said, Fredericktown, three and two in the KMAC, but with Centerberg's win, only a game back from three teams. They still play Centerberg on Wednesday before finishing their first half. They have a chance to still, they still control their own destiny for at least a share of the championship. And that's something that you look for even when you slip up like this. Yeah. Have a chance. Yep. Yeah. And 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 the thing you're going to anticipate is over the next four to five weeks that Fredericktown, those sophomores are going to get a lot better. The freshmen's going to get a lot better. Yeah. So when Northmore has to go down there, you know, whatever, probably about four weeks to play, um, they're going to have their hands full a little bit because I'm sure their coaches are going to point out, you know, hey, if we cut those turnovers in half in the first half, we're probably not down 15. Yeah. We might be down six or eight. Yeah. And now it's a whole different basketball game. Next up for both teams, Centerburg. Fredericktown, Freddieburg, part one coming up on the 17th. So four days from now, Wednesday. And then Saturday, Northmore heads to Centerburg. You'll see that game live and free on the OH Report. Could be, you never know, Fredericktown might get the win. Or it could be a matchup of number one teams yep. in the KMAC. Uh, we'll just have to find out. Any final words for you, Coach, before we head out of here? No, I guess I guess we, we need to give some condolences to the Browns fans. <laughs> uh, and then, and then you and I, you and I, Packers, are, Steelers, we still got to play. We, we still got to play. We're still alive. Play, but, uh, Our seat, we aren't golfing yet like the Browns. <laughs> no, huh? no. Yeah. So, Sorry about it, Brian. I know Brian's probably <laughs> watching, cursing us left and right right now. Uh, it's just, you know, the Flacco magic just ran out. I'm yeah. sorry. C.J. Stroud, it's his time, I guess. But yeah. uh, sorry, Browns fans. Hopefully, Northmore fans that are Browns fans, you're a little bit happier. Your Golden Knights yeah. got the victory. <laughs> but that'll wrap things up for us. Uh, what a day of sports. We had Upper Sandusky girls, Clear Fort girls, Upper boys, and now Northmore. I want to thank everybody that helped make things possible. Coach Joe Baylog is always on the color commentary. Madeline Zazuto our camera operator, and then our sponsor is Andy Bauer, Edward Jones Financial Advisor, our scoreboard sponsor, Ohio Means Jobs, Morrow County, our MVP sponsor, Morrow County JFS, our pregame, halftime, postgame sponsor, Northmore Athletic Boosters, our instant replay sponsor, and then Morrow County Hospital, our timeout and commercial sponsor. Want to help thank Head Coach Blade Tackett, who is also the athletic director here at Northmore for allowing us to be here, and the Ohio High School Athletic Association for allowing us to live stream these games to you live and free. Golden Knights pull away in the fourth for the 64-46 victory to pull atop the KMX standings. For Joe Baylog, I'm Travis Berardi saying so long from North Bloomfield Township.